What is up, my fellow adventurers? So you want to try solo camping, eh? I like to uh, sneak in a few solo camping adventures every year, at least two or three. Uh, and I've been doing it for about a decade. And let me tell you, it is an amazing experience. So here's 10 tips to get you out on your solo camping adventures. Tip number one is always let somebody know where you're going. I mean, I like to do this even if I'm going with a couple people, but it's especially important when you're going out on solo adventures. So what I like to do is either text somebody a list of the lakes in the order that I plan on traveling across them. If you're doing a hike, just text them the name of the hiking trail you plan on going on. Uh, another thing you can do is send them a picture of the map uh, that you're using with a piece of string laid out on it. Super simple way to just show them the route you plan on taking. And always stick to your route. Because if you detour, you decide, oh, I'm going to change my plans, people might not know where you are. Tip number two, make sure your fire starting skills are up to snuff. I mean, you don't want to go out there and find out the conditions are a bit wet, you can't start a fire, and you're freezing all night, or you're stuck in soaking wet clothes or something. If you're not confident in your fire starting skills, I would suggest working on it and getting them up to par. You want to be able to start a fire in pretty much any condition you might encounter. So knowing which types of tinder might be in the area that you're going to use, knowing how to utilize them, knowing the different steps for building a fire are great. Tip number three is to bring a satellite phone. Uh, I use the Garmin InReach Mini, which has been great for me. I haven't really had to use it. I just kind of bring it as a safety. Um, either that or go where you know you're going to have cell phone signal. I mean, if you've been there before and you know the cell phone signal is always good, uh, pretty much anywhere in the area, then you can debate that and not bring it. But I always like to bring my Garmin just in case as a backup. Uh, if you ever get hurt or something, you want to be able to just bust out your sat phone or bust out your cell phone and call for help. Tip number four is don't take chances. I mean, when you're with a group of people, you feel more secure to, you know, jump from rock to rock or scale down a little cliff or something like that. When you're solo camping, you don't want to do those kind of things. You want to take as little risks as possible. You want to stick to the route that you chose from the beginning, that you told somebody about, hopefully. You want to minimize your risks as much as possible because you don't have anybody with you to drag your broken butt out of there. Tip number five is to bring extra food. When I'm going out on a group adventure, I typically only bring, say, one extra day of food just to keep my pack weight down because I know I can rely on other people to bum a little bit of food off of if I need to. But on a solo trip, I like two extra days food for a little extra insurance. So if you ever get stranded, windbound, or hurt, you have a little bit of extra insurance to uh, keep you alive. Da -da! Tip number six is to go somewhere you know well. At least when you're starting out, uh, you want to go somewhere that you've been maybe a couple times at least. Uh, so you know if there's cell phone signal you're less likely to get lost. There's plenty of reasons to start out with this. Also, I'd say start out in good conditions uh, where there's not gonna be a lot of rain and stuff like that, just to build your confidence. You don't wanna fail on your first time out there and that kind of ruin the whole experience of solo camping for you because it really is a great adventure once you get your skills and everything down pat. Tip number seven is to bring extra lighters. I mean, when I'm going on a group trip, I always bring a couple extra lighters, but when I'm going solo, I always bring a couple extra lighters beyond my couple extra lighters. Just as a reassurance, I'm more comfortable carrying a couple extra lighters that I'll probably never use than to find out, oh, two of my lighters don't work, and now I'm down to one lighter. Another quick tip is if your lighter gets wet and you have an extra dry lighter, you can save that lighter just by lighting it like that and uh, that's going to ignite the fuel for you and dry your lighter out just kind of rotate it around a little bit and hold that for 30 seconds or so and then the next time you light the lighter it's probably going to fire right up for you. Tip number eight is to always hang your food. I mean there's lots of setups that you can buy pre-made to make hanging your food super easy. You can also use a barrel which doesn't necessarily need to be hung to be protected against small critters, 
but a bear can still get into them. I mean, the number one thing is you don't want to wake up with a bear on top of you in the middle of the night. That's not going to be a fun time. Uh, like, something getting into your food and stealing half your food is the least of your worries. You can probably still call and get out of there. But if you end up with a bear on you in the middle of the night, you're completely defenseless. You don't have anybody around to scare that bear off or help you out of there if it injures you. So always keep that in mind. Tip number nine is to always pack entertainment. Personally, I like to bring Wild Edibles books or bushcraft books, something that's kind of related to what I'm doing. And a lot of times if I get bored, I just go out and practice my skills. I walk around and try and identify plants. I don't necessarily eat the plants, but I do my best just to identify them to try and get it in the old noggin. Um, another thing you can do is bring a small speaker for music. Just keep in mind that if there's other people out there on the lake, sound travels pretty far and you don't want to annoy them, so just keep the volume to an absolute minimum so as not to annoy other people. You can also bring a game, a pack of cards, whatever, to keep you entertained. Life just gets a little bit more boring when you're on solo adventures sometimes, but it also gives you an opportunity to take more pictures or just appreciate a nice sunset, whatever you want to do. The last tip I have for you guys is just to be minimalist. I mean, in a group setting, especially if you're sharing a tent and sharing some of the gear, one person might be carrying the tent, another person might be carrying all your food prep kitchen gear, and that makes each of your packs lighter, and you only need one piece of each of those equipment. But when you're on a solo trip, you're carrying it all. So really think hard about what you're bringing, whether you really need it, whether it's going to really make your experience any better. Because I would suggest leaving it at home if it's not. You're going to appreciate it at the end of the day when you're not tired and worn out and you just have more energy to appreciate the beautiful setting you're in. Hope this helps you guys out. Like and subscribe for more camping tips and tricks. And get out there for some adventures of your own. They're waiting for you.